Is the Obama administration turning a blind eye to a rise in Muslim honor killings happening right here on American soil? Look at the lives of Amina and Sarah Saeed or Noor al Maliki. Their lives, they lead two lives, the Western life and then the one in the house, which is, which is torturous. And uh, the Obama administration, which is so pro-Islam, uh, there's certainly a reluctance to address the issue. When he was in Cairo, he equated the violation of women's rights in America to those in the Muslim world. And they're quite different. Women are very subjugated in the Muslim world. So how big of a problem is this honor killing, at least here in the United States? Well, as more Muslims move into the West, you see an increase in honor killings. They are rampant in Europe, uh, certainly increased dramatically in Canada, and now here. I mean, how many girls have to die or how many girls have to live under threat before somebody says, okay, it's time to pay attention to this issue? She's very scared. Okay. Uh, tell me what's going on. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm a Christian, and uh, my parents are, are Muslim. They're, they're extremely devout, and uh, they can't know about my faith. Well, they do now, but um, my, they've threatened to kill me. I, will, there's, I don't know if you know about honor killing, but this, this faith uh, that, that <laughs> you guys don't understand. Islam is very different than, 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 uh, than you guys think. They have to kill me. My blood is now halal, which means that because uh, I, I am now a Christian, I'm from a Muslim background. Um, it, it, it's an honor. It's, it, if they love God more than me, they have to do this. And I'm, I'm fighting for my life. You guys don't understand. I, I, <laughs> they don't understand. Do you, what did your father say to you? He said he would kill me. Or he's, he's why I'm sent back to Sri Lanka when he pulled me to asylum. He said he go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ran away from home. I wrote my parents um, a note. I said, I refuse to deny Jesus, and he's my Lord and Savior. And I pray you find his forgiveness and mercy, and I love them both dearly. I, I, I wrote that, but they never showed it to the police officers. They want me back home. I can't go back to Ohio. You guys don't understand that community. They're, they're, they're like, I will die within a week. Like, my life is at stake, but I, my, my dad threatened me. I was ready to die. This, these were my thoughts, that I'll be a martyr for Christ. Let it be so. But um, the Lord led me here somehow through His grace. I rode on a bus for 27 hours to 30 hours to get here. And uh, I've, I've um, yeah, so it's been God's hand protecting me the entire time. And, uh, but I'm fighting for my life, so if, if prayers are appreciated, I, I don't know what, today's my birthday, my 17th birthday, and I'm, I might even die. I don't know what's going to happen to my own life. Like, Can you tell me why you ran away? Um, I was threatened by my dad. Um, uh, when, my, when my dad found out, I had a Facebook, that's how we found out. And uh, phone calls from the Muslim community started coming in with emails, and he confronted me, and he, I had, I had a laptop, and he took that laptop, and he waved it in the air, and he was about to beat me with it. And uh, he said, you know, if you have this Jesus in your heart, you're dead to me. You're not my daughter. And um, I, I, I refused to speak, but he said, I will kill you. Tell me the truth. And, uh, is it, and, and these words, bad words, he cut, cut words. And um, so I, I knew that I had to get away a couple of weeks later even. I, I told my dad that I, would, uh, I, would fall, I, I needed to learn more about Islam because I was scared. And I said that because uh, when I had come to know the Lord, I, I dropped everything about Islam. I mean, I had to hide my Bible for years. I would go outside to pray. When my dad was asleep was when I went outside to pray. I snuck out to Christian prayer meetings and in fear of my life. And uh, finally, this day had come where I was confronting my dad. But um, a, a, a couple of weeks later, after I told my dad that I, would follow, I wouldn't follow Islam, but I would learn more about it, and he put me class after class after class after class, thinking that, you know, I, you know, I, that my mind was going to be back in it. But of course not. I mean, I'm a follower of God, Jesus, the true living Jesus. And, um, and, uh, so, but a couple of weeks later, my mom found a Christian book, and I knew it was then that it was over for me. Um, I had to leave. Where, how did you end up in Florida here? Here? Uh, I what happened is that night I uh, I just I, I had to leave so I, I left 
that Saturday night, was it? Or Yeah, it was Saturday night in the morning. I left to go to a friend's house, and uh, I, I asked her. I begged her to take me to church. I needed to get to church. I needed to pray. I needed to seek the Lord to know what to do. And so that entire day from 7 in the morning uh, to, to late at night, I prayed and prayed and prayed, and finally I was able to get a ride back home to, to, to the person's house. And then I, I stayed there Saturday, Sunday night because my dad was coming back home from, from his trip that night. And so I stayed there that night, and I just left. I hitchhiked uh, to a bus station, and I got a ticket to Florida because I had met them through a, a prayer ministry on Facebook. And this was the farthest away from Ohio, and you don't understand. If I had stayed in Ohio, I, I wouldn't be alive. And so I, um, I was able to do that, and I, I called them from the bu- on the bus. I used random, you know, nice people there that I, I was able to talk to. And I used their phone to call them, and then uh, I, was, I came here. And, um, Has there been any type of killings at all in your family? Have you ever seen anything like that? I'm not sure, but in 150 generations in my family, no one has known Jesus. I am the first one. So imagine the honor in killing me. Like, there is great honor in that. Because if they love Allah more than me, they have to do it. It's in the Quran. Yes. And uh, you can, in, like, in t- like, give them knowledge about it. Because um, the knowledge... Hopefully they finish talking to you. Yeah, so... Um, he really will explain it and break it down. They have to do this. Like, if they, they, they just have to. And uh, either they do that or they send me back to Sri Lanka. And, and if there's an asylum, there's an asylum there um, where they put people like me. Like, they think I'm crazy. And uh, Do you really think that this is true or do you think this is just a threat? <laughs> Uh, there's actually hundreds of cases that are back to like me. Amina and Sarah, they, they, they were forced to go back home. They were killed by their dad. Like, this is not just some threat. <laughs> this is reality. This is truth. This is reality. If How many more cases? If you want, there's case after case. There's hundreds of them. I am one. I am one of hundreds. They have to. This You guys don't understand. <laughs> They, they have to. I don't know what else to say, but they have to. I, if you want proof, there's hundreds of cases that can validate my story. Even my friends and, and, and people from back home, they knew what would happen to me. My own brother knew about my faith, and yet he didn't tell my dad. What does that say? He knew the consequences. He knew. And so what do you want at this point now? I want to be with them. I want, I want to be free from my parents. I, I want... I want to be free. I want to worship Jesus. I want to go to church on Sundays and read my Bible and say Jesus is alive whenever I want to. You guys talk about religious freedom? No. I don't have that. I want to be here and I want to worship Jesus freely. That's what I want. I don't want to die. All right. It's, you know, when, in, when Europe allowed Muslims in and to observe Sharia law, they opened up the can of worms there. Where are we in relationship to that? Have we allowed it? Have we embraced it? Um, are, are they actually starting to live by Sharia law within our own U.S. law? Well, you know, the Obama administration is very pro-Islam. When he was speaking in Cairo, he said he was going to make it safe in America for women to wear the hijab. It's not. It's, it's safe for America to wear the hijab, for women to wear the hijab. But what about women like Rivka Barry who don't want to wear the hijab? A week after he nationalized some banks, the U.S. Treasury was giving uh, seminars in Sharia finance. He said he wanted to open up Islamic charity for more, that we're holding back. Uh, uh, now, we're not holding back on Islamic charity, but we do know, like the Holy Land terror trial, that they, they use Islamic charities to fund jihad and terror. Who's supporting you on this? Because I know you're taking donations of all kinds, small and large to fund these billboards, which, by the way, are controversial. I know you've had some blowback from different groups throughout America, but who's funding this? Okay. It's, they donate to our group, SIOA. They gr- donate to Atlas Shrugs. It's all very small donations. And I have no idea why this is controversial. Anybody that's against these campaigns supports honor killings. This is not directed at Muslims. This is directed at girls in trouble. If I ran uh, a, a sign for women that were getting beaten, is that, am I saying that all husbands beat their wives? Right.